Hey guys, let's get started with one dimensional motion or motion along a straight line or linear motion, however your professor might refer to this. I'm really excited to do this video because this is the very beginning of physics. It's actual beginning of physics. So let's take a look. All right, so first I wanna talk about constant slash average velocity and speed. So what's the difference between velocity and speed? and what is the deal with constant and average velocity and speed okay so first remember we talked about this earlier there are two terms that deal with how much something moves right how much something moves and those terms are displacement which is given by delta x it's a vector so it gets a vector hat um, it has a direction so it could be negative the other term is distance distance d it's a scalar so it doesn't have direction um, and it can't be negative, right? So displacement and distance, again, in everyday language, they use interchangeably in physics. There's a very clear distinction. Remember, um, just a quick example here. If I move three and four, my distance is seven, but my displacement is my displacement is five, right? So my delta x would be five. So they're different. Um, just like how there are two terms to deal with how much something moves, there's two terms to deal with how fast something moves, and it's analogous to um, this situation over here. So the two terms are average velocity, so velocity and speed. I'll talk about the average portion a little bit later. So the difference between velocity and speed has to do with its definition. And this is kind of boring, but you have to know this really, really well. Um, first one is the average velocity is defined as displacement over time elapsed, but I'm just gonna call this time. Displacement is delta x, and this is delta t. Um, delta x, remember, is x final minus x initial, delta t. x up here is measured in meters, times is in seconds, so average velocity is meters per second. Um, velocity is a vector, delta x is a vector, these guys are technically uh, vectors as well. It gets annoying to draw all the arrows, so we're not always gonna do that, but we're defining this, so we gotta be proper. Um, speed, um, I'm gonna use a letter S. That's not a five, it's an S. And it is defined as distance over time. And distance, again, I'm gonna call D over delta T, and it's also in meters per second. All right, so I wanna point out the difference here. This guy is defined in terms of displacement, this guy is defined in terms of distance. One is a vector, the other one is a scalar. So, for example, if I say that I'm moving with 5 meters per second, this is the scalar, this is a scalar. But if I say I'm doing this at or towards the north, this is a direction. And these two things, remember, combine to form a vector. So a vector is a scalar, the size, plus the direction. Um, so there, that's, that's the difference. Notice that the vector V is defined in terms of a vector, delta X, and the scalar X, uh, S, is defined in terms of the scalar D. Vector with vector, scalar with scalar. Now, the distinction between velocity and speed, um, again, everyday language use those interchangeably in physics. There's a big difference between them. One's a vector, the other one's a scalar. Now, in terms of the names, it's kind of arbitrary. They just have to pick a name and say, okay, the scalar is going to be speed and the ve velocity is going to be the one that's going to be the vector one. Um, now, I'm not sure why they chose those two the way they did, but one way that I remember, or that you could remember, is that velocity, v, v goes with vector, v, v. So that sounds kind of stupid, but maybe remind it, it, it helps you remember. Um, speed, s, goes with scalar, s, s, v, v. Cool? So if you know the definitions, then you, you will, um, it will pay off in terms of avoiding confusion, possible confusion in the end, um, or later on. So negative velocity. Negative velocity has to do with you moving in the opposite direction. Remember, signs in physics, positive or negative, have to do with direction. Now, what do, what do I mean by opposite direction? And this is kind of silly, but you're moving, if you're going the negative, if you have negative velocity, you're going opposite to the direction of positive, right? So usually we say that the direction of positive is up and to the right, 
we can change this, but if that's the convention that we're using for a particular problem, negative velocity just means that you're going to the left or that you're going down. So negative velocity, the negative just means direction, okay? Speed's a scalar, so it has to always be positive, um, though it could be zero if you're not moving at all, okay? But it could not be negative. So that's velocity versus speed. Now I want to talk about constant and average. So here's the idea. In the very beginning of physics, we're going to make problems simpler uh, by having no acceleration. And let's say you go from, um, you're traveling between uh, two long distances, and you're, this is your velocity over time, just a quick sketch. And obviously you start your car from zero, you reach certain velocity, and then there's a bunch of traffic on the way, and there's all kinds of crap happens, and it looks like that. Well, this is a really complicated problem to solve because it's basically if you're trying to estimate travel time that you're computing every time you slow down, when you stop on a stop uh, light. So it's, it's way too much. So what we're going to do in physics, we're going to say, well, it looks like the average of this is about here. And we're going to call this the average velocity, which will greatly simplify the problems. Now, the thing is, if you look at this average velocity, the idea of the average velocity is that it's a constant velocity, okay? And when you have constant velocity problems in physics, they're much simpler because there's no acceleration. So, these are basically the same thing, effectively, they're the same thing, because an average velocity is a constant velocity, and so average velocity is going to give you a constant velocity, which means your acceleration is zero. Now, in this situation here, your acceleration is not zero, but you're basically making it zero by getting this one number, um, one velocity that's equivalent to all these weird velocities adding, added up, okay? And we do that to simplify. Okay, so what's, what's good about these problems, they're simple because there's only one equation, right? And it's really hard to mess this up because there's only one equation, and that equation is the, the one that I just talked about here the average equals delta x over delta t. I want to point out something really important. This equation um, only works if you have no acceleration, right? This equation um, only works for you to find your velocity if you have no acceleration. Otherwise, what you're finding is you're finding the average velocity, not the actual velocity, okay? Um, sort of another version of this equation is s equals d over t. But generally, we're going to write it this way. And you're going to write V equals whatever, delta x over delta t. Even if you're dealing with speed, um, you just be careful to use the right sign uh, and, and note the differences between the two. Okay? So it's not like there's really two equations. We're just going to typically use one. Now, what I do want to do, so that there's this one equation here, is I want to write a, a different, another different version of this equation. So if you were to expand this x here into x final minus x initial and then move a bunch of stuff around, I'm not going to do that, but you can do that yourself, you arrive at this equation, x equals x initial plus vt. It's probably a good idea for you to try going from one to the other. It's really simple. Um, and I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call this the position equation. And the reason why I'm giving this e equation a name is because we're going to use it later for some stuff. And I want to be able to say, use the position equation. But it's called the position equation because x is your x final. It's where you are. x initial is where you started off, where you were. So this equation says where you are is where you were plus how much you moved. Plus how much you moved. Cool? So that's it. So you only have that one equation. There's two versions of it, but it's really the same equation. You don't have to pick equations um, like you're going to have to later. Um, so before we actually start on like legit physics problems, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the general steps for solving every physics problem. Obviously, this is a very generic uh, guideline, but basically most physics problems will start with some sort of text, a paragraph, a little storyline, and you have to draw and get some sort of diagram, right? You have to draw a diagram. It's going to help a lot draw as much as you can and then from diagram you're going to go to equations so you're going to write some equations and from those equations you're going to solve the problem so there's three steps basic steps draw write equations and solve now this part here is sort of physics 
plus like some reading comprehension, right? So I'm gonna just kind of call this English plus physics. And then this part here is math. It, and my point is, once you have all your equations, you're done with physics, it becomes an algebra course. Um, I mentioned how physics is math with rules. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to end up being just math and there's a storyline that came before that. So all physics problems end up being math problems in the end. Cool. So the next thing I want to do is, again, before we jump into actual physics problems, um, I want to focus on just this part of the equation right here. Right? Not going from text to diagram. I'm going to give you a diagram and I want to practice getting an equation and solving. The good thing about these questions is there's only one, one equation, um, so it's very straightforward. So these are what I call interval diagrams, which is a term I made up. Um, and it just means that if you're moving, you're going to draw a little dot um, between beginning and end and sort of connect it to it's sort of an obvious diagram and put all the information in the diagram. And what you're doing usually is you're getting this huge paragraph and turning it into a picture, uh, consulting the information so you can focus on finding your equation and solving. So here's my little diagram. Um, so I got that. It's already been given to me. So I have to write an equation. The good thing about this, this section is that there's only one equation. So it's just V average equals delta X over delta T. Now, very often you're going to see this um, without your average. It's because it gets kind of annoying to write average, average, average all the time. But remember, this V average is only your actual V if the acceleration is zero. Okay? Um, if not, you technically should be writing average here. Okay? But here we have a constant speed for all of these, just to be clear. Constant velocity. All right. So let's plug in some numbers. I'm looking for velocity, so I'm going to put a little circle around it so I know that's the one I'm looking for. Delta x is x final minus x initial. Delta t is t final minus t initial. Let's plug in numbers. This is 20 minus 0. And this is 5 minus 0. So the answer is just 4, 4 meters per second. So this was crazy easy, right, just to get started. Let's look at this one. Um, that, that's the final answer. Let's look at this one. I have velocity equals delta x over delta t. Now I'm given the velocity, so let me just write this here, 3. Delta x is x final minus x initial divided by um, t final minus t initial. I'm going to already go ahead and do this. This is final minus initial. The total time is 5 seconds. And we are looking for x2, or in this case, just x final. And all I have to do is just move stuff out of the way so that it x is by itself. This 5 multiplies over here, 3 times 5. And then this x naught here goes to the other side as a positive, And this is what you get over here. And by the way, that number is a 0. This guy is a 0. So x is simply 15 meters. OK? Really straightforward. Let's do another one here. Um, this is v equals delta x over delta t. I know my v. My v is 4. My delta x is x final minus x initial, t final minus t initial. So time uh, x final is 20 minus x initial is what I'm looking for. And then the time is 7 minus 3, which is a 4. So this is 20 minus x initial divided by 4. Cool. Let me go away. And I'm looking for x initial. So so what we're looking for right here. So we just got to get this guy alone. I'm going to move the 4 over here. I got I got 4 times 4 equals, uh, that's just 16. Let me just do that. 16 equals 20 minus x initial. Um, I want to solve for x initial, so I'm going to move it this way so that it becomes a positive. And I'm going to move this guy this way so that x initial is by itself on the left as a positive. So I got 20 minus 16 equals 4 meters. Now obviously the actual uh, algebra steps you take don't matter as much as long as you get to the right answer. Okay, there's a few ways you could have gone here. So that's it for this one for this intro to one dimensional motion.